true adventure is hard to come by these days. The world's become a smaller place and great journeys of discovery are rare, which makes 19-year-old Ryan Campbell even more extraordinary. While other teenagers rarely leave their bedrooms, Ryan has just returned from an epic airborne adventure that literally took him around the world. For the last 10 weeks, I've followed this determined young man's quest to become the youngest person in history to fly solo around the globe. And yesterday, the conquering hero returned. As Australia voted this weekend, at Wollongong there was something even more important in the air. The homecoming of local teenager and air ace Brian Campbell. Yeah, it's a phenomenal ride to do something like this and I, I wish everyone could do it. I wish everyone could experience and see what I've seen. Thousands turned out to see flying Ryan Return to the arms of his mum, Jo, the woman who'd put on such a brave face for so long and who could now finally relax. <laughs> I can't tell you how proud we are. <laughs> you've, you've done us proud. I appreciate it. I can't believe it. <laughs> I can't believe it. I lo love to go out with the mates and, and have a good time but uh, you know, I'm, I'm not the most confident person out there. You know, I'm not the one on the middle of the dance floor doing all those dance moves, but... Um, but you're very confident at 10,000 feet. That's right, I'd rather be in an aeroplane than anywhere else. <laughs> Ryan Campbell's the first to admit he's not your typical teenager. Industrious and serious, while other kids were playing video games, Ryan was already at the controls of a light aircraft, racking up flying hours in pursuit of a dream. I actually found out through a newspaper that I could fly solo on my 15th birthday. I didn't even think that was physically possible. It's I mean, extraordinary. Common sense is you'd have to have at least... I'm sure the authorities license. don't know this. <laughs> we won't tell them. No. <laughs> Two years ago, then 17, young Ryan set his sights on a lofty Thank goal. Gotcha. To be the Hello. youngest person in history to fly solo around the world. I stopped worrying about him when okay. I said him. <laughs> so, yeah. But before this young pioneer could take to the skies, he had to seek the permission of a far greater power than any aviation authority, his mum, Jo. Hello, you too, you good? He did the dishes before he asked. Oh, really? That was <laughs> the biggest surprise. Just to sweeten us up. And, uh, yeah. He asked Dad first, and when he got past Dad, he reckoned Mum was going to be harder, so he, he come to me next. And what did you think? Honestly, probably in that first thought was, well, why not? Ryan grew up just outside of Marimbula on the New South Wales south coast. The youngest of three boys, all of them with a passion for anything petrol driven, be it boat, bike or go-kart. But Ryan was always the serious one, mature beyond his years. Am I right in thinking that this kid is 19 going on 40? Yeah, even, even when he first started to fly, that's to say, you know, we would go to, go to the airport with his L plates on the car and then he'd strap me in and give me a lecture on this is what's going to happen, Mum, don't worry about this or don't worry about that. It's the way of history. When young men leave our shores for adventure or wars, they go with Dad's blessing and a mother's tears. You knew it would come to this moment, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, If you sat down and you broke everything down to what could go wrong, we wouldn't do anything, would we, in life, you know? And you wouldn't let your children do anything. Over three months across 44,000 kilometres, 15 countries and four continents, he's been alone at the controls of his single-engined aircraft, the state-of-the-art Cirrus SR-22. 180 hours to circumnavigate the globe, always eastwards into the rising sun, stopping just long enough to rest and refuel and plan 
the next leg of his journey. Such an epic undertaking, it's easy to forget Ryan's still not fully qualified to drive on Australian roads. It's weird that you can fly around the world, but you're still on pea plates. I can't hire a car. Anywhere I go in the world, I can't hire a car. I can't drink in most of these places either, so it's gonna, just going to be me sitting around. <laughs> Got on the map here, I've got Fiji, it's just out here, a few hundred miles. The first leg of the journey is a baptism into the loneliness of the long distance flyer. It's 3.50 in the morning. Uh, I've been up for about 50 minutes, try to get all the bags packed and, and ready to go. Uh, it's a windy and wet and dark morning in, in Pango Pango. Uh, this is definitely the most nervous I've been for a flight so far. Long stretches in the cockpit with little sleep in between as he island hops across the vast watery rim of the Pacific to Hawaii. Then he faces the longest haul of his journey, 14 and a half hours across the edge of the Pacific from Hawaii to California and the drama begins. But that hasn't happened. I've had 15 not headwinds the whole way. And I can't believe they're still there. I've tried different altitudes and at uh, the moment at 13,000 feet, which is why I'm on oxygen, but... Ryan is battling strong headwinds with a dwindling fuel supply. ...what's in a tank, uh, so there's just that's uh, in your mind the whole time. I haven't listened to music, but eaten, haven't done anything. All I've done is just uh, seven hours of fuel calculations, so I just I cannot wait to get on the ground. I really can't. You have what's called a point of no return. You either have to turn back at this point or, you, or you're committed to go, go ahead. You don't have the fuel to get back to Hawaii. So I had to make that decision. That's a hard decision to make. It is, is it? an inexperienced it's pilot cool. on your own. But Ryan's cool head prevails. 7,000 for traffic. And it's top of you, the uh, 737. Makes it to America, where as an Australian pilot, he finds a crowded airspace frighteningly unregulated. That's a 737. Holy crap. And on to the heartland of the Midwest. Hey, Tiny town called Oshkosh, Ohio. Aviation buffs Mecca and the home of the world's greatest air show. Are you the guy from the Frog's <laughs> Hollow Flying Club in Marimbula? Absolutely. <laughs> At 19, Ryan will be the youngest pilot to ever fly solo around the world, stealing the record from this man, 21-year-old Jack Wagand. Jack, yes, I've heard all about you. Well, thank you, yeah. You two are going to be quite amicable, aren't you? I think so, yeah. How's Jack held the title for a mere 10 weeks. He finished his trip a day before Ryan took off, but if there are hard feelings, he's kept them well hidden. What I'd like to know at this stage for him is how does it feel when you finish? <laughs> Just landing, seeing all your friends, your family, all your supporters there that welcome you home. I mean, there, there's nothing like it in the world. From Oshkosh north to Canada, he journeys on, leaving the North American continent at a place called Goose Bay and heading east towards the frozen North Atlantic Ocean. Uh, it's a few specks of white. They're real icebergs. That's pretty cool. I've never seen a real iceberg before. The thing about my aircraft is that although there's a lot of positives, one negative is it, you know, it doesn't have icing protection. And uh, the, the idea is to stay out of icing. I was uh, pretty nervous about this leg only because of icing. I can see that uh, outside air temperature is quite good at the moment, but as I go further north, it'll get colder. Uh, there was a section there where I couldn't, I couldn't do anything else. There was no other options for me to get out of it. What does ice and the wings do to you? I mean, obviously it makes you heavier apart from anything else. It just degrades performance. The aeroplane slows down, it loses lift. It just changes, literally changes the shape of the wing. And, and occasionally aircraft are lost as a result. Of if you get things. serious icing, absolutely, they are. Landfall at Iceland on the edge of the Arctic Ocean. It's phenomenal. There's no sign of anything except rocky hills and, and snow, water and uh, icebergs. And on to Wick in the beautiful northern highlands of Scotland. Which is uh, just south of London. In south, across the green patchwork countryside of England. Checking out into the sun and, and, and flying down over the countryside. And on across the English Channel to Europe. France. Just up 
there will be Belgium, beyond Belgium to the Netherlands. And then if you look back this way, you can see literally White Cliffs of Dover. Uh, seriously, seriously cool. That's English Channel, which um, apparently people swim across. What round the world tourist has ever had such a glorious bird's eye view of the planet as this 19 year old kid? I took off and I flew over a glacier and then I descended over a castle into Scotland. And it's just hard to get your head around that where you are before you know it, you're out of Scotland, you're into England, England to France, and it's, um, it's a roller coaster ride. Far away places with strange sounding names, sights, and smells. This is, this is different. Oh, it's a long way from Marimbula. Yeah. I catch up again with our hero in Sri Lanka, in the Indian Ocean, towards the end of his incredible adventure. You like fish? No. <laughs> I don't like flathead batter at home, let alone whatever that is. From the Sri Lankan market to the most dangerous part of Ryan's journey may have been the trip by Tuk Tuk back to the airport. Welcome to the land of Tuk Tuk, <laughs> Sri Lanka. It's, uh, yeah, it's something else. It's a bit frightening. Yeah, I'm liking the handle. Ryan left behind chaos on the roads of Sri Lanka for chaos in the skies above Jakarta and another heart-stopping touchdown. It was a mess. There was you know, planes coming from everywhere. What they did and how they put me into the airspace was completely different to anything I'd ever experienced. And then it's a downhill run now until he makes Australian landfall at Broome. That's it. Big country to cross, but... Oh. And yesterday morning, at 10 o'clock, he touches down in Wollongong, where the whole adventure began 70 days ago. As men in flying suits like to say, mission accomplished. And for those of us who can't have an adventure one way or another, he does it for us. So he would tell you, come on, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a big adventure, you don't have to fly around the world, you know, whatever your adventure is, you have to believe in it and go for it. Will you let him go again? No. <laughs> right. <laughs> Life is complicated. You've got to step right back and just have simple yes and no answers. We're all born, we're all going to die. It's so simple. You know, it doesn't matter what. You know, I have this view, you just got to take it as it is and do it. Well, you've done it. I don't know what you can do with the rest of your life. You're only 19. <laughs> I don't know. Nothing like this again. But, uh, but no, it's been a, a cool ride. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.